Psalm chapter 1. I have named this uh, uh, the blessed man versus the ungodly man, but I think a better title would be a recipe for success. Uh, we, uh, we believe in prosperity. But I like what Kenneth Copeland said many, many, many years ago. I think I heard him say this 40 years ago. That real Bible uh, prosperity is the, have, taking the ability of God and getting your marriage fixed, your finances fixed, your health fixed, your social life fixed, all of that. It's not just about money. Money is a part. How many ever read the scripture in the Bible? Train up a child in the way that she, in, in the way she go, and it, when it's told not to depart from you, it doesn't say raise it up. It says train it up. That's all talking about money there. We think it's talking about just being good. That's that part of it. You know, that's part of it. But anyway, uh, in the financial arena, there's some do's and don'ts. How many found that to be true? Yep. If you want to be successful, you know, always going in debt. You live above your means. If you make $2,000 a month, you live below that, not above it. So that just there's some recipes for success in anything you do. Um, uh, Dwayne back here is an ace mechanic. He can take a, a cat motor, Cummins motor, Detroit motor and tear it down, put it all back together, overhaul that thing from top to bottom. But there's things you don't do as well as things you do mm -hmm. in that. He knows what to do. I don't believe what wrench to cut. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. I just know it's in there and it's supposed to run. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, Others are good. Golden, for instance, back there is an ace blaster. He has the knowledge, and, and he's done that right here in Kansas City in one of the hospitals they built here. He has the knowledge to go, if you're going to build a hospital out here 20 feet from this building, he knows how to blast, take dynamite, blast rocks out of the ground and blast a hole without damaging the foundation of this building. I wouldn't even know how to use dynamite, let alone knowing how to do all of that. So, Bill, he just knows a lot about cars. I, every time I have a little question about a car, I call Bill. <laughs> What's this worth, you know? And he kind of keeps me there. There's just things you do and don't do in every, every line of business. Uh, Mike's a, a ham operator and a, been a sprint engineer and has some patents with sprint, you know? I don't know anything about those stuff, but he does. There's some things you do and you don't do about that. So in every in every line of work there's that. So as we look at Psalm one, I think we have a a, a uh, idea of what the blessed man does and what a blessed man don't do. And so I want to start by saying this book of Psalms here is made up of hundred and fifty what? Somebody said it. Chapters. Really, it's 150 poems. How many knows there are two kind of poems? Parker knows. I know these teachers know it, but I didn't see a teacher raise her hand. <laughs> there's two kinds of poems. There's poems that rhyme, and there's poems that don't rhyme. What are the poems that don't rhyme called? Huh? Song? Well, I guess you could do that. There's another word for it. Prose. Prose has, don't have a rhyme. Don't have a, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Don't have a uh, metrical structure to it. So the whole book of Psalms is a 150, we call them chapters, a whole 150 Psalms written mostly by David about 1,000 years before Christ. Now, some of those psalms are, uh, David's kind of like us. Now, the, the, uh, the psalms is in the Old Testament, but it's, it's 
David operated in New Testament understanding for the most part, but he's still kind of like us. He, uh, some of those songs were, were all about distress. Oh, Lord, help me. Woe is me. And some were calling for help from God. Some, some of his songs were acknowledging sin and guilt, and some of the songs were uh, saying, God, get him. Called out fire from heaven like John did. You know, some of his songs are about vengeance on Israel's enemies. Kind of like us. We want God to bless them with a brick sometimes. Haven't we? It ain't right, but we still have that idea occasionally. I mean, God's working it out of us. I understand that. But still, sometimes we have just a tinge of that left. Lord, I just, just you know, you know. Then there's a lot of psalms of praise, too. Some of the psalms are anticipating the Messiah. But all of them had a connection with human, uh, human emotions and the sovereignty of God or the, the divine providence of God. Now, we all know that God is all-powerful. What do we call that? Omnipotent. Omnipotent. Or O-M-N-I means all. Omni. We can say omnipotent, but in English we pronounce that omnipotent. He's all-knowing, and that's what? Omniscient. Or we can say omniscient. So we say it omniscient. We pronounce it omniscient. And then there's another one where he's everywhere, all at the same time. We call that what? Omnipresent. Okay. Now, I'm telling you, I'm guilty. I'm guilty of sin about this. I used to think that was the, the, the characteristics of the devil. He knew all about me. He's everywhere. He's all powerful. But when I study the scriptures, I find out that's really the characteristics of God. Not the devil, because I found out the first declaration that Jesus made after the resurrection was all power is given me in heaven and earth. Not a little bit. Not Satan's still got some, and I've got some. Not I've got most of it, and Satan's got a little. He said all power is given me, both in heaven and in earth. So that leaves Satan with none. I couldn't tell you how many years that I talked about how powerful the devil was. Oh, the devil knows this, and the devil knows that. And I had a PhD in the devil, and I didn't have any kind of education about God. So I studied and I went on a quest to learn about God. And I realized when I really studied that Jesus had all powers given him in heaven and in earth. Now who did what I did? I think, don't you think the human race is still struggling with that a little bit? It, even maybe us that went to church a long time are still struggling with that a little bit? I know I used to have a lot of songs in my guitar case, and Lynn and I used to sing together quite a bit. And as the Lord took us from, from glory to glory, from faith to faith, and as we, we grew in the Lord, there were some of those songs we took out that was no longer edifying because we had learned some things. And we found ourselves putting some new songs in the guitar case. And as we grew and from, we went from faith to faith, from glory to glory, then there were some more songs we took out. And new songs we put in. You know, every generation thinks of the last one. If you'll study history, every generation thinks of the last one. It's no different today. Let's listen to Christendom. This is it. This is the last one. This is it. When we, when we study us, or us, uh, terms like last days, you know when the first time last days was mentioned in Genesis? Every time God moves from one, one realm to another, there's a last days of that order. Does that make sense? There's a last days of that order. We move to another realm. There was a, there was a Passover order. as an order God brought to the church in understanding we're not just worshiping sticks and statues and bound to Mary and all of that. There's another order, and that's Martin Luther said we're, we're saved by 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 what? By what? By grace through faith. By grace through 
faith. By grace through faith. That was a, a new order. There was a last days to that other idea. That other doctrine. There's some people still hold on to it. Some people today still hold on to it. But those Lutherans come out and they were persecuted. And then 200 years had passed. And another group called later was called the Methodists and understood sanctification. And there was, they said, we're not only saved by, by grace through faith, but man, God put something in us when we're tempted, tested, and tried, we can say no. We don't have to partake of that. That was a, a new order. That became a last days something else. Is this making sense to you? Help me out. Somebody say yes or no. Okay. It was the last days of that. 150 years later, there's some Methodist people studying and praying, and they found out and realized, man, there's a baptism in the Holy Ghost. We haven't experienced that. There became a last days to another order. Those early Pentecostals went through tremendous persecution. You can go to libraries and tell, I'm not telling you, I'm making up stuff. So I'm, went, I, I'm telling you stuff. I went to the library right here in Kansas City in a Christian school and learned this from, from books I've read. Protestant denominations hung with Pente early Pentecostals in trees by their heels because they preached the baptism of the Holy Ghost. These were people pleasing born again, salvation by faith and all that, but they couldn't accept the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, those early Pentecostals went through a lot. We, we may pray in tongues and sing in tongues. There's some people who paid a price for that. But, so that was our last days to an old order. Now, a new fresh, fresh breath of the Spirit called Pentecost had came on the scene. Guess what, 1947, 47 more years, there was another breath of the Spirit began to blow across the nations called latter rain. And in that move of God, there's more than speaking in tongues. There was prophecy and an understanding of Davidic worship where we sing praises to God. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. The Pentecostal, guess what they said? Not of us. I went to Pentecostal church. Linda went to a latter rain church in the same area. I remember our church said, don't go to camp meeting. Don't go over there. That's heresy. The Assembly of God people in 1950s from Springfield, Missouri, went to Mount View, Missouri, and blocked the roads because of the latter rain outpouring. There's a last days to everything that God does because he moves to a new realm. Now, Remember this. The last move of God becomes the greatest enemy of what God does next. Can you see that now? The last move of God becomes the enemy of what God does next. Because when you, when you have a new revelation, oh my, we're the select of the elect. I don't know how I got on this, but it's not sure not my notes. <laughs> But that's what I pray in the Holy Ghost before we come to service and through the week. I said, Lord, I just want your anointing. I know I've got some notes here I can read in five minutes. Let me look at the Facebook the other day. She put my whole sermon in a paragraph. It was so good. I just texted. I said, I think next Sunday I'll just give you my notes. I said, we'll get out early. <laughs> she did she nutshell that whole thing. Very good. I told I told them uh, many times. I said, you know, there's one thing I can be assured of. Well, Linda Buckner listens to what I say. You can find it on Facebook. It's it's down to a nutshell. The rest of you made too. But she puts it on paper. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Here, you want to do it? You can finish it. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, so David had a lot of emotions and he had a lot of fears and he had a lot of praise too. But we, as we understand God is sovereign, God moves and every time he moves we, we want to fight what's new. 
Uh, I'm not saying be gullible. No, don't, don't be gullible. But go to the scriptures. See what God says about it. And begin to understand, is this truth? And as God sovereignly does some things, He also creates space for us to have choices. Does that make sense? He creates a space for us to have choices. Now, as I, as I see the scriptures, and I'm not just putting it on you, I'm just expecting you to, to go to the scriptures yourself. The scripture says once in the Old Testament and twice in the New, that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of the glory of God. Paul said in another place, nobody can do that except by the Holy Ghost. Now, I'll tell you what I used to say, do when I used to read that. I'd say, oh yeah, everybody will confess, but those in hell will be too late. They'll confess it'll be too late. The only problem is the Bible doesn't say that. You see, there was the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Herodians, and the lawyers. The Pharisees they all hated each other. The Pharisees took the scriptures and added to it. The Sadducees took the scriptures and took things away. They all fussed among themselves, but they all agreed long enough to crucify Jesus. We can fuss over, the Christian community can fuss over how you ought to be baptized, whether you ought to have communion, the crackers and grape juice, every Sunday or once a month or whenever you feel like it. They can fuss about this, they can fuss about that, but we can all get together long enough to send somebody to hell. Am I right? But the Bible says every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So I had to say, wait a minute. That's not in my doctrine. Because my doctrine sends people to hell. So I had to say, either I'm wrong or it's wrong. So what I come to understand plus a lot of other scriptures, you know. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, and, and Romans 8, 29, uh, many other scriptures, I begin to see that. I begin to understand our destiny is set. Because God, He bought us on the cross. He paid for everybody. Good, bad, no good. They're His kids. Whether they know it or not. Now, But our journey is based on our choices. So some people, although they're God's kids, they have no idea. So they're blundering along here in life, falling, bruising themselves. That's a parable of, of getting in all kinds of trouble and all kinds of things happening. And, you know, sometimes they get into their life and, and they're, they're addicted and they're, you know, in debt over their eyeballs and you know all kinds of stuff happen because of bad choices and people say well you know where was God in this I said where have you left him where was God in this remember when the tornado was coming, coming right through here and I had was at church I, I think we were just down there cleaning or something I went, went home or maybe it was for church I ran home to get something it was black I mean, the sky was black, and everybody's out in the street looking, and some of them was wringing their hands, oh, going like that. And I stopped, and I had my power window, and I rolled my power down, window down, and I talked to this guy here, and he's just tattooed from head to toe. And I said, it won't hit here. I talked to it. I spoke to it. I'll never forget this. He raised his hand. Hey, everybody! It won't touch down here. This man spoke to it. <laughs> and I said, I don't know what it'll do somewhere else. That's their responsibility. And I drove off, and it touched down on Lee Summit. Hit that school over there. I don't think it, I was thinking on Saturday or something. But you know, it's just time we take charge. Understand, invested in us. The Spirit of God's invest, He's put Himself in us, Dwayne. It's, he's in us. He's in you, buddy. He's in me. He's in Susie. And sometimes we face situations and we wonder if he's in there really. <laughs> but he's there. Amen? 
So I just want to say, in all the sovereignty of God, even though God said every knee will bow and every tongue confess, there's a space for us to make stupid mistakes. And I, if they can be made, I've made them. I've made them all. I, I, I've been a chief. Paul said he was the chief of sinners. But he also knew some things, too. I had a old agnostic professor in, in college that said, you know, it's a it's just a, a understanding of the, with all, most all professors that Paul of the Bible is probably the smartest man ever walked the face of the earth. Now, I don't follow his stuff, but he said, so, you know, people do understand that there's validity in Scripture. When we look at Psalm 1, we see both the sovereignty of God or the divine providence of God, but we also see a connection with human behavior or human choices. In Psalm 1 it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, or standeth in the way of sinners, or sat in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Thanks for having that up there. And he shall be what? Like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall what? Prosper. Prosper. The ungodly are not like that. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall what? Perish. Shall perish. All right, let's dissect this a little bit. Let's look at the behavior of a blessed man. Now I want to tell you something. I want to be blessed. I aim to bring a 20 this morning, but I didn't stop by the ATM and just slipped my mind. I was going to just lay it down up here and say, whoever wants to come get it, can get it. And just see how long it took somebody to move. You know, it's kind of like a... <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like I was telling Linda Buckner, I believe I was telling Linda today, uh, people don't listen to, to uh, announcements. They just, they hear it, but they don't register it. And I remember John Osteen one time, he said, you know, people just don't listen to, he said, I started saying, now listen, these are Holy Ghost announcements. He said, so I just checked my people. They run about 6,000. He said, you know, next Sunday I'm going to be speaking on this. And he gave the subject. He said, and Wednesday night we'll be speaking on this. And he said, and that, the following Sunday we have a guest speaker from Little Rock. It's going to be so-and-so. Be sure to be here. And there's an alligator in the pool, an alligator in the baptistry. And, you know, the next Sunday night we're going to preach this. He said, nobody asked about that alligator but one little boy. <laughs> he came up to me after church and said, can I see that alligator? <laughs> he said, so... I just showed you that nobody listened to them but one of the boys. So. It's kind of like we had a little more playing over here on the floor. I feel who, who it was. But his parents sent him to a Christian school. And that little boy heard me say, every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. At this Christian school, they started teaching him about 98% of the world was going to hell. He said, uh-uh. He'd been laying on the floor down there. He said, the Bible says everything will bow and every tongue will confess. He died. Mm -hmm. Playing under a chair down there. And you know what? Parker, the Lord had to beat that into me for months before I got it. I heard it over and over and over and over in my spirit and I still argue with it. You know why? Because good preachers that were anointed and I saw people heal said people were going to hell and I trusted them and I believed in them. But I had to, I had to come to a point, Parker, to understand some of those people had come to the last days of that order. God had begun to show me something different. Does that make those bad people? No, not at all. When I preached it, I was, I was preaching as innocently as I knew how when I preached everybody's going to hell. We used to make statements, boy, I preach hell, hot, heaven, hard to get to. Yeah. People don't enjoy that. And, you know, critics of today 
says, well, we'll preach a uh, uh, so easy a gospel. Well, you know, I understand that God does love us, and I understand that, and we're going to get into some things here in a minute. It doesn't justify sin. It doesn't justify failures. It doesn't justify disobedience. So we're going to look at that in a balance, Joyce. <laughs> okay. Joyce knows I hate that word, but anyway. That's my, her my secret why we don't. <clears throat> the blessed man. Number one, he does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. When, <clears throat> when a person, just look, just think in life, the people you know, when they get into a struggle, see who they go to. See if they go to an old prayer warrior or see if they go to somebody who's had the same struggle and they're in the same mess. I want to tell you, here's the type of people I want to go to. A preacher that I went to listen to one time, he said uh, he was a missionary in, over in the New Zealand area. And uh, let's get this story straight. And he had been mentored by a preacher in California. And that preacher had died, but his wife was still there. Man. And he hadn't seen her in years. She had gone blind. And she lived in a little trailer house in, in Northern California. And he, he took some of these missionary boys with him. And he said, I want, to meet, I want you to meet a precious saint of God. I'm talking about this that kind of people go to. This lady is sitting in a rocking chair, blind in her back. Well, I learned about on the animal planet, bats, bats ain't blind. But anyway, that's a myth. Anyway, she was blind. He knocks on the door. He hadn't seen her in years and years and years and years. 30 years had went by. He found out she was blind and found out her husband had died. He knocks on the door. She said, said come on in, Sam. That's his name. Hadn't seen her. She hadn't seen him in 30 years. But she knew by the Spirit. Said, come on in, Sam. Jerry. That's the people I want to go to. When I have a problem, when I have a test, I don't want to go to somebody's blood as bad as I have. And still in that dilemma, I want to go to somebody that knows how to pray and say, son, you need to do this. If you do this, this is what God expects. That's the people I want to go to. And I'll tell you what, there's, there's not a lot of them left. I hope I'm looking at some of them right here this morning. But I can go to say, Sister Dawson, I'll tell you one time she told me this. She said, Brother Mike, and I've never forgotten it. He told me this so many years ago. He said, sometimes you get in a place, there's nobody to encourage you. You have to encourage yourself. I don't know if you remember telling me that, but those words were eternal words in me. You know, there were words that I needed to hear. I, I helped with the funeral at Salem, a lady named Ada O'Dell. She was kind of blunt, but she's one of them prayer warriors. Blunt probably would be an understatement, wouldn't it, Lisa? Exactly. <laughs> but <clears throat> she came to church one Sunday, she said, where was you last Thursday? Well, I was trucking, and I was trying to think, last Thursday. No, she said, a week ago Thursday. And I said, a week ago Thursday. I don't know all over the country hauling cattle. I couldn't remember where I was at. I said, well, I'll think on the day then. I said, why? She said, well, I was canning corn and green beans, and I told this at the funeral. And I said, it just like this. She said, I was canning corn and green beans, and I didn't have time to pray for you, but she said, the Lord put a prayer on my heart, and I had to just shut off my pressure cooker, and I went to the front room and I knelt and I prayed to let the release. And I thought about the next Sunday I told her, I said, I know. I remember where I was at and what was happening in my life. And your prayers kept me pure. And I told that at that funeral. Her little nephew who now was married and had his own family. He told his mom, he said, Brother Mike told the truth. He was from Kentucky. He said, I have to be up at Ada's spending, this, spending a week or two when that happened. He said, 
She turned that pressure cooker off and she said, I'm half man, but I've got to pray for Brother Mike. <laughs> she went in there and prayed for me. You know, that's the prayer warriors that we need to turn to. Blessed is the man who don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed is the man who goes to somebody who knows what God says about it. Those are people you want in your life. What's the next thing? Blessed is the man, and that's a woman either. Either one. Who don't stand in the way of sinners. That's a blessed man. You don't do things that cause the sinners to say, well, I, I, I'd go to church, I'd love God, but if that's Christianity, I don't want it. The blessed man don't stand the way of sinners, nor does he, what? Set in the seat of the scorn. You know what? I'll pick out my kid here. She's a sweetheart. But kid, yeah, let me sweetheart. But if Mackenzie got dog drunk and did something awful, wrecked her car, it isn't our job to put her down. We're not going to sit and see the scorn. I told you. That's what she deserved. That's what she gets. And what our job is? You'll pick her up. You'll love her. Say, so, you know, you don't know. She might have. She might have uh, went through 190 temptations to get drunk and didn't. We don't know that. Now, she didn't do all that. I'm just making this all up. Just for the tape's sake. <laughs> she didn't do any of that. But you don't know how many temptations she passed up and didn't get drunk. We only see the one thing. I mean, we, I'm just saying society. We ought to be there to say, you know what, Mackenzie? Get up, try it again. You're a, you're a winner. You're not a loser. A blessed man don't set in the sea of the scorn. But a blessed man, verse 2 says, his delight is what? In the law of the Lord. Now, in order to delight in the law of the Lord, you can't just think about it once in a while. When do you meditate? Day and night. Day and night. And I'll tell you what, this is something that has worked for me. Uh, remember when uh, Dale was in the hospital with uh, my life support? I, I was still driving for Walmart as, a, as one of the <coughs> last summer when I was a part-timer, but I left out of, I left out of uh, Joplin, going to St. James. And I pulled out of Joplin with the load on I've got a spirit of prayer come on me for Dale. Now, if you ever seen Dale in the service here, I never did ever hear him sing. Once in a while, I'd say go like this. The wife is here, and sometimes he'd go like that. Sometimes we pray for people, he'd come up here and put his hand out on people. He participated with all that he knew. And I started singing, Yes, Jesus, I love you. Yes, Jesus loved me. I sung it, and I sung it. I sung it all the way to St. James, but I sang it in tongues. And I kept singing it. And I'd say, Dale, I'm singing this into you. Yes, Jesus loves you. Yes, Jesus loves you. And I just kept singing it and singing it and singing it. And I got the St. James come across my computer. It said in the truck, call St. Luke's Hospital ASAP. Up to the Walmart and see where I was at. And I called. And they had those life support on him. And they took him off and they said, You know, in Missouri, you can only keep him 14 days, I believe. And this is day 12. We're going to start cutting the sedation back. We're going to take the life support on He might last two hours. But they took him off and he said, Where's Mike? And he has a boy, Mike, and all, they call the family there, and there's all family sitting around. And uh, he said, no, Kronk. And so we had to find where I was at. And they said, call the hospital immediately, ASAP. And I called, and uh, what's the oldest girl? Uh, uh, 
you know, Peggy, Peggy, Peggy answered the phone. She said, Mike, she said, Dad, it's Mike. He said, he wants to sing to you. He sung to me. Yes, Jesus loves me. He hadn't sung in this church that I, that I knew of. But it, that's what the Spirit does. So when they took that off, you know, aren't you got that big hole down your throat? You can't really talk. And he says, I want some ice cream with a bottle of strawberry on top. And they just find their guests in the doctor's place. They said, they run got that. And they said, anything else? He said, yeah, I want some meatloaf. <laughs> At this point, get him anything he wants, you know. And two days they dismissed him. I'm just telling you, the Spirit knows. You know, deep calls out the deep. And I didn't know what God was doing and all that, but singing that all the way is about, I don't know how long a trip it is from St. James. It seemed like I got there in a minute, but it was a long time. But I sung it and I sung it and I sung it. And here he's saying, Jesus loves me on the phone. I'm just telling you, the Spirit is so powerful. It is so powerful. We have to delight in the law of the Lord when? Day and night. Sometimes when we do that, but just a quick prayer don't fix it. Sometimes you got to say it and say it and say it not to convince God, but to convince yourself. Because sometimes we get so full of doubt and unbelief because the situation is turning us in the face. I remember when our store burned, I was working, but Linda had met the, the mailman. And she said, Honey, I'd see the mailman coming and I started crying. Because we'd get sued by, by people we owed money to. But I wasn't there to, to see that. You have to say a quick prayer hadn't always fixed it for me at least. So now I'm just saying it over and over and over what God says about it. I'm an overcomer. I'm a winner. Praise God. I'll, I'll pay this in the name of Jesus. I refuse to go bankrupt in the name of Jesus. I'll pay this. We are on the way to church. We had to get sued for uh, $900. Had to had it paid had to have it paid by Monday. And this is Sunday Sunday night. We were on our way to church, and the kids were in the back seat. And I don't remember which kid did it, but we were all singing, just singing. And one of the kids I remember said, and we were singing praises, Hallelujah, bless the Lord. One of them said, Thank you, Lord, that my dad and my mom has nine hundred dollars, and we did not discuss it with the kids. That's how the spirit works. That night we got a check at church for a thousand dollars. And I'm always quick to say, if this is a church, I try not to handle the money. You all know that here. Somebody gives me a check, I say, there's George. You live to George. If she's not here, give it to Bill or somebody else, because I don't want to touch the money. Not that I'm gonna cheat, not that I'm gonna keep it, but it keeps any talk down. I want to be I want to be a ministry of integrity. And this person said, no, this is for you, Amanda. This was that check that we thought was $10. And we got home and Amanda screamed, oh, it's a thousand. She said, we paid that $900. We had $100 for grocery. Yay. <laughs> God's always faithful. But a quick prayer doesn't always fix it. Sometimes you've got to meditate in the law of the Lord. How often? Day and night. Not to convince God, but to convince yourself that His Word is true. Because you're faced with a mighty dilemma. Every one of us had that sometime or another with something. But his health, his finances, a, a bad relationship, or something. You know, there's always something that, that faces it. But the blessed man delights in the law of the Lord. Let's see what he's like. The Bible says he's like a tree. Now, I'll tell you something about a tree. The tree has the ability to, to, you know, through bark and leaves, they have an ability to take in carbon monoxide and turn it into oxygen. I've always wondered why cities like Kansas City wouldn't take prisoners and just donate a tree to every yard and let them plant them. 
it would help the city as far as good air and stuff if they just plant a tree in everybody's yard. Let the president do it. Let them do something productive. But anyway, that, that's just my, my take on that. <laughs> but a tree has that ability. Now listen, we're seeing things. We see film, we see things on TV we ought not see. I mean, they got to they got to use a naked girl to advertise toothpaste. I'm telling you, some of those advertisements are so off the wall. They'll start out, and I think they're going to advertise hamburger, and it'll be a car. Maybe I'm just dumb, but I, I'll say I don't get the point. What's the point? What was they trying to say in that? <laughs> anyway, let me somehow you cut me out on that. <laughs> but anyway, it, <laughs> we have all this stuff coming at us, and sometimes people don't even have the audacity to turn their TV off when it's filled. We have that. We have newspaper. We have printed material. We have friends, we have family, and a lot of times friends are, are, are me good, family means good, but sometimes they say negative stuff. We have to be a blessed man will hear all of that. See, we have we don't have bark and leaves, but we have ears and we have eyes. We take that in, but we ought to, a blessed man will take that in, but he won't let it contaminate him and he'll turn it into something that he'll serve humanity and he'll love people. he'll love the unlovely we've had several come through to the church here that's come and gone and my my my, uh, my comment to Linda was always this yes there are certain things we didn't like but we preach well, God's going to send us unlovely and we lack them for a while Till we see what we don't like and we don't like them anymore. I said, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Something's not deep enough in us to tolerate a little of something that we don't like for a little bit while they grow out of that. I look at Tenny and I say, you know, she's been rejected. But anything that 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 opposes what she's doing feels like another rejection. So I choose to love that family no matter what. I am not going to let it offend me. Matter of fact, I feel like doing something more than we've already done. I know it's going to... Don't worry about that, but... I'll just tell you what it is. I want to pay her book off. I want to do something extra. It's extra. Thank you. I'll get that word straight one of these The Lord spoke this to me. We have we we are we tithe strictly. I mean, not not like two hundred eighty-two dollars and eighteen cents, but we are very very. I'm gonna say, say it the right way. We're very very uh, disciplined. Thank you, Holy Spirit, to tithe on our business. Although we don't live out of it. But the Lord spoke to me the other day. He said, Thou get blessings, but the overflow comes from over above that. So, we have been doing some, but we're going to do better than that. We're going to do something over and above that. So, we've blessed her with, with what she required, but I want to bless her over and above that. You know what? This church will benefit from it. We'll pay our debt off, we'll pay our mortgage off, and we'll love that family no matter what. Amen. Matter of fact, we're going on with the mother-daughter banquet. Linda's already got a speaker plan. Called her, texted her last night. And this gal, we've known her since she's a kid. And uh, she said, I just told my husband this week, I think I'm going to take early retirement because I think God's going to open doors for me and let the center text when you come and speak next year. We're going to have it in April, not around Mother's Day, so you're all free from that. She says, already this week, God opened that door. 
very tired of it. We want to have uh, first fruits come and sing. You know, so, you know, we don't have to put $10,000 in it. And I, I mentioned to, to Tammy, I said, Tammy, we, we are not necessarily so interested in presents with bows on it. We want the presence of God. That's what we want. We want the presence of God more than a present with a bow on it. We want people to leave here changed and say, I don't know about those people, but I'm different. I feel like God has done something to me. That's, that's the presence that we want. That's what we're after. The blessed man delights in the law of man. And he'll be like a tree, but not any tree. A few years ago, I was traveling through North Arkansas, and I love traveling down through there in the third week of October because those mountains are so beautiful with all the different colors. But then had a drought, and so many trees were dead. And all you could see was <coughs> evergreens, because the, the pretty trees, the oak trees that have orange and yellow and all, wasn't that way. But this tree, it would be like a tree planted by what? There was a water. That's a different tree than the once went through a drought. He'll be like a tree planted by the river's water. And he will bring forth fruit. 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 Now, a many season, it doesn't come at once, but he will bring forth fruit. It won't be maybe so. He will bring forth fruit in season. And his leaves shall not wither. He'll not have a winter season in his life. See, this is a parable. It's an allegory. It's, it's a uh, simile of like uh, it's making you like something else. We can identify with that. His leaf, I don't have leaves. I have hands, I have feet, I have a brain, I have eyes. But what I'm doing, I'm not going through that winter season. My leaf, I'm not going to winter. And whatever I do will what? Prosper. Whatever I do will prosper. Man, that's good stuff. I might have something on this next page on that side, and I'll leave it out here. The ungodly are not like that. It says the ungodly, verse 4, are not, like, are not so. They're not like that. They're like what? Chaff. Chaff is the husk that's separated from a seed. Uh, and in the old days, they threw it up in the air, and the wind would catch it, and blow the chaff away, and the seed would fall out in a pile. Now, in later years, a little later years, they call it willowing. Now, in our lifetime, they call it threshing. Now, somebody can identify that. Now, in my, down where I come from, they call it thrashing. But it's threshing. And now, now we have something different than a thrashing machine. Now, we have a combine. Anybody ever drove down the road and seen a combine, combine and wheat? Behind that wheat, you'll all, uh, combine, you all see this dust? That's not just dust. That's the chaff. The Bible says the ungodly, it didn't say the sinner, said the ungodly like that. So the ungodly is somebody who's godly once. Somebody who knew something about God. Somebody who walked with God. Somebody who let a circumstance change their life. <clears throat> they said they're just like that. Just like that. Something the wind blows away. <clears throat> Not sinners. They're ungodly. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall what? That's a good thing. The way of the ungodly shall perish. I cannot find any place in the scripture. This is kind of new to me. I've just come on to this in the last maybe three or four months. We have preached so hard against the law. I we have preached so hard against the law, but the law that we're preaching in is not necessarily the Ten Commandments. I don't find anything wrong with it. 
Now you gotta understand what was happening. Oh my god, I can't do this in three minutes. I'll try fast. What was happening, the children of Israel, they 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 were down there mad as a hornet, because they were working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Maybe you got some sleeping time in there, but those Taskmasters work them so hard. You know what happens when you work really hard and you're really frustrated? You do dumb stuff. They were killing one another. They were had worshiping other gods besides the true living God. I've been reading in Ezekiel all through the wilderness journey. They were even sacrificing kids to to uh, Molech and burning their own kids in the wilderness journey. Man, I, all these years, Jerry, I had this, this saint mentality that, man, these are godly people. They've left Israel, they left Egypt. You know, they're just really following God. That wasn't the case at all. I was shocked. As I, I, you know, I've read Ezekiel before, but I just didn't get it. Come behind that. And it's so plain to me. It says, the world was wondering. And God was so fed up with that. Later, he said, their, their violence and their wickedness come before him, and he, he cleaned the land with a flood. Get all the way up to the, nearly to the New Testament, and the prophet said, Oh, Lord, how long is these people going to do this? And you know what God's answer was? It's not going to be a flood anymore. I'm going to fill the earth with the glory of God. Now, we haven't seen that yet. <coughs> So their work will be done. Their work will be done. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment nor sinners in the congregation of righteous, for the Lord knows the way of the ungodly shall perish. I started to tell you this. About two months ago it occurred to me. You know, this is the way the Holy Spirit it just it just occur, occurred to me. Jesus redeemed us from the curse. But it didn't take away the blessing. And I went back to Deuteronomy and I read that. He said, you'll be cursed of the field. And, and all the people said, yes, amen. You'll be cursed of the city. And they said, yes, amen. But when he said, you'll be blessed of the city, blessed field, they didn't say nothing. And I began to see, he implemented a Sabbath day. These people worked seven days a week. Now the law, as the law of Moses began to be a good thing in this respect, they got a day off. They hadn't had that before. He implemented tithing because he wanted to bless them. They weren't blessed before. And I began to see all that and I began to see tithing, although it was under the Mosaic law, was a starting place. That's why I think the Lord said to me the other day, he said, you've been real faithful in tithing. But it's over and above that where the real overflow comes. Over and above your tithing. Now, I, I sent an offering to uh, one individual that does not like me at all. I'm in heresy. I'm no good. And the Lord, Jerry, just puts it on my heart to send him a check here once in a while. And I, I'm not trying to buy his love. You know, you all love me. That's all I need. They love like me. That's all I need. I'm not buying you for his love. But I just want to bless him in spite of him. You know, just in spite of him. Just, and not, not to spite him, but just, it, I don't let what he says about me hurt me. I'll bless him anyway. The Bible says to do that. So I want to be a blessed man. I, I really like blessings. I don't like poverty road. Been there. I mean, I ain't rich, but man, at least we can go out and eat when we want to. <laughs> and I'm not, I like to pay wherever I go, and I like to tip good. I don't quite tip like Parker does. Parker got me snowed. Parker tips 100%. His bill's 35, he gives 35. And he says, 
right on his ticket for God so well the world that he gave John 3 16. I said, Parker, how do you do that? He said, Well, Grandpa, you just don't go out and eat very often. <laughs> <laughs> but I just think that's phenomenal. That's really, Amen. really good. That's not tithing. If he gets fed here, that's where he's tithing from. Because they're not, oh, they feed him physical food, but his spiritual food don't come from a wages. But that's his way of witnessing. God hasn't spoke that to me yet. <laughs> I do I do 20% and a little above that, but that's about all I do so far. <laughs> the partner got me good. So I begin to realize that's a starting place. And God wants to get the children of Israel, their mind out of that that work uh, peasant attitude. So many people have a welfare attitude in our society today. You know, the best weapon against poverty is your job. It's not a handout. It's your job. Quickly. No, I'll finish this next second. 12 o'clock, I won't back. I've got so much more to say about this. It'll be one o'clock real quick. You've listened very well. I'd rather close with you listening good. We'll pick it up next Sunday on the recipe of success. Uh, really, my title is The Godly Man, a uh, Blessed Man versus the Ungodly Man. There's things that you do that you want to be successful in life. You want to be blessed. And, and God don't just bless you because you give, but give in service. Given hospitality, serve. That's that blesses humanity. You are God in how say here. You are God personified. You're His hands extended. You're His feet. You're His. You speak. The Bible says we're ambassadors for Christ. The ambassador in another country. He speaks for our president. When he speaks, as if our president speaks. So when you speak, it ought to be what God would say. Not something opposite. You're ambassadors, okay? Let's stand our feet. Father, I just thank you and I praise you, Lord, for these great folks. I thank you, Father, that these folks are good listeners. I believe they had ears to hear this morning. And help us, Lord, to understand the last days and old order that you're taking us into a new day. We thank you, Father, for what you did for Israel, but Lord, we thank you that you're dealing with the Palestinians as well. You didn't leave them out either. You said some powerful things about the Ishmaelites. And Lord, sometimes us Christians get lopsided. And we forget the other side, that you love them as well, and just as much. Lord, we thank you for this new day, this new anniversary for the state of Israel. But Lord, we, we believe in some of those people that who hate America, who are terrorists in their belief system. Lord, you're going to heal our babies. And you're going to heal them of diseases. To the point that they'll know this is the true God. This is the true God. Lord, although the, the news media don't say anything about it, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of those people coming to an understanding of Christ within. But the news media don't tell you about it. I thank you, Lord, for all the people that you're using to, to minister to those people that have been taught that we're infidels. And I thank you, Lord, you're doing a mighty work. Mighty work, in Jesus' name. I've got one last story to tell you. Ray Hughes said uh, uh, a few years ago that France cut off any missionaries coming to France. And he said a mighty revival of the Holy Spirit broke out among the gypsies. 
I don't know who started it, who got it to them, but over one, over 500 gypsies all come to an understanding of the power of the Holy Ghost. I said, I'm just, you can't put God in a box. He'll do whatever he needs to do. I don't know how he got that message to a bunch of gypsies. I'd want them all to kneel and pray and his prayer. You know? I told Parker, I said, Parker, we need to get Carla filled with the Holy Ghost. His girlfriend Carla. He said, Grandpa, she prays with us all the time already. I said, what? You know? God does it without me. He's just doing the work. Amen. He's just doing the work. Hallelujah. You got something, Carla? Come on, Ben, come back and let's, let's just worship the Lord. Father, we just worship you. Jerry, go to Mike. You're good, you're good at worship. We just worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We worship you, Lord. It's all about you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. With a whole heart, Lord, we worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We glorify you. Let's lift our voices before God is one. six, seven breaks. Now he thinks something is broken on his ankle. And uh, Parker, I want you to lay my hands on his. That, are you wearing your boot today? Okay. Amen. Let's just believe that this, God can, can do a miracle for him. He can be released this week from wearing that boot just because of the healing power of God. Hallelujah. Just worship man. Father, we just thank you. We just thank you, Father, for healing healing power of God. Hallelujah. We worship you, O God. We worship you, O God. Hallelujah. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
we just thank you. you. Don't ever leave us nor forsake us, Lord. In our mistakes, in our sin, in our failures, you, you just woo us back to yourself. You woo us back to yourself and thank you, Lord. You will never leave us or forsake us. You're bringing all of us to a higher realm in you and a higher understanding in you. Help us, Lord, to for each of us to come into a new day in our own thinking. Help me to come into a new day in my own thinking. Help me to see you in a brand new light. In a brand new light. In a brand new way. In a brand new way. Help me, Lord, to move from the place I'm at to a new place in glory, a new place in strength, a new place in you. That my, even my behavior will even be different than it is today. My emotions will be different than they are today. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Friday night is our gathering. Try to be here. At seven. We start at 7.30 and we have for a meal is a loaded baked potato. Is that correct? Is that what you call it? Baked potatoes and topping. Baked, baked, baked potatoes and topping. All right. Hop it with some good stuff. <laughs> Amen. I don't know who else coming, but you be here and uh, we'll have a good time in the Lord. Okay? So, uh, Move your stuff off the table, and you girls get the table claws off, and you get the parker, get those chairs out of there. Guys, will you fold the tables up and put them in the side room? If everybody will help, if everybody will do something, it won't take very long to get it all done. Thank you so much.